Heap Right with Ralph K. Genorio. Fentanyl is China's revenge. Like an abused child grown up to be a child abusing adult, Red China is consumed by an obsession for revenge. Every sin that hypernationalists <clears throat> within the People's Republic imagine was perpetrated upon China during the 19th and early 20th century period of weakness is being resurrected. These old evils are being revived by China to be used against the wider world. The Chinese Communist Party, CCP, has propagandized generations to obsess over a so-called century of shame. From before the 1842 Anglo-Chinese Opium War through the communist takeover in 1949, China was conspicuously weaker than the West. This coincided with the most aggressive epoch of European imperialism when Europeanized great powers conquered nearly the entire world. Much of China's weakness was self-inflicted. China cut itself, cut itself off from the outside world from the early 1600s through the early 1800s. Europeans posed no significant threat when they closed themselves off. China then lived in a fantasy of isolationism where nothing outside mattered. The European West, including the United States, which came calling in the early 1800s, was being transformed by the Industrial Revolution. These Europeans had increasingly greater strength relative to China. By the late 1800s, cartridge firearms, smokeless powder, the machine gun, and mobile artillery, among other things, made the West unstoppable. China's weakness was perpetuated by a contempt for the foreign devils. China had always been the central civilization in East Asia, around which all others orbited. Barbarian invasions came and went, but China never suffered a dark age because their superior culture always absorbed the savages into themselves. The West's superior industry, technology, and in many ways culture was unprecedented. The Chinese response was to disdain the round-eyed barbarians as being beneath contempt. They did not adapt themselves to the industrial age. Consequently, China came very close to being divided up by the Europeans into separate colonies around the year 1900. Only U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt's open-door policy saved China from partition and direct rule by Europeans, Japanese, and Americans. China remained whole, but it had been compelled to agree to a series of unequal treaties that effectively made the Chinese people into second-class citizens within their own homeland. The first of these unequal treaties was imposed because of the Chinese defeat in the First Sino-British Opium War of 1839-1842. to 1842. The Manchu dynasty would only accept silver in return for foreigners buying Chinese goods. This drained Britain's silver reserves to such an extent that a plan by the British East India Company to import Afghani opium instead was enacted. The desperation of drug addicts undermined imperial silver policy as it degraded countless Chinese lives. Peking dispatched commissioner Lin Se Tu. He gathered all known opium stocks in Canton and pointedly burned it within clear view of the European enclave. His policies led the British to declare war. The consequences of China's defeat included the abandonment of the silver requirement, China's allowance for the importation of opium, the British gaining rights to act within China above and beyond Chinese law, and ultimately to an extendable 99-year lease for the islands that became Hong Kong. Soon, every other great power extorted similar concessions from the Manchu dynasty. They overshadowed the entire history of the 1912 through 1949 Republic of China. Only Japan's efforts to conquer China from 1931 to 1945 eclipsed them. The communist victory in China's civil war ended them. Like every totalitarian dictatorship, 
the CCP demonizes enemies to focus attention away from their enslavement of their own people. Anti-American, anti-Western, and anti-Japanese propaganda dominate Chinese media. Without exception, every problem faced by the Chinese people is blamed on outsiders, is blamed on us. Today, decades of Western investment despite all of this, has transformed China into a powerhouse. The CCP now imposes unequal treaties and 99-year leases on any nation foolish enough to partner with their Belt and Road Initiative. China now bullies every one of its neighbors, threatening war unless concessions are granted. China even claims the global fish catch and is stripping the seas of fishing for everyone. I guess the all oceans of the world were once uh, a part of ancient Chinese uh, claims. Evidence is mounting that the fentanyl epidemic and much of our broader drug addiction crisis is being orchestrated by the CCP. Xi Jinping and his Politburo are gleefully doing to the West and to the rest of the world what they believed was once done to China. None of this recognizes that no one alive then lives today. Two world wars, a cold war, the advent of atomic weapons, and the widespread fundamental social changes that have happened for the last 130 years have transformed the westernized world since the Boxer Rebellion of 1900. Today's CCP imitates their self-made caricature of the West of those long-ago times. This is why today's fentanyl epidemic is like no previous criminal enterprise. It is a foreign attack, part of a broader series of attacks intended to weaken the West while being just minor enough to avoid provoking a full-scale war. The old Cold War rules no longer apply. Our open borders aid this attack. Like before September the 11th, 2001, most Americans have no idea that there are those already at war with us. Unless we awaken to the existential threat posed by the Chinese Communist Party, of which the fentanyl crisis is only one small part, we will be easy prey for their revenge.